that's me. What I, what I normally do is, you might have seen a lot of the stuff I do is um, on manual handling. But what I, what I also got into a few years ago was mental health. And the area that I sort of went into was, was the male-dominated industry, but also with men. Well, I would do, wouldn't I? Because I'm a man and I can relate to men. So it, during this, and I had a chat with Fiona yesterday. Fiona called me. Ladies, um, women, females, sorry. If I use a, a, a term that upsets you, I'm not in, in upsetting you on purpose. But me and Fiona had a big chat yesterday about somebody using the word ladies. I will the people get, get upset with that. So before I start, I want to apologise to any females, because I'm sure you're females, or those who are non-gender assigned as female. Whatever, whatever it is, I'm not being insulting when I talk about this. So, and what I did is go into this, and, and I, at the moment, I focus in on male-dominated industries with regards to mental health, because as older people, and there's, there's no one in the room older than 40, is there? No? Good. No, no. <laughs> well, what happens is you, you'll find that those older gentlemen have this thing that they deny mental health, they deny that there's anything wrong with them, and they still want to be sort of the, the patriarch of the family. There's this machoism that's going out there that, that they don't let go so i started exploring this and i sort of asked myself is there such thing as a midlife crisis because everybody throws this around don't they go oh he's going through a midlife crisis but also i don't I, one thing i found was it's normally re normally related to men you don't hear women having midlife crisis why is that oh, yeah so do you think there is such a thing as a midlife crisis i'm gonna ask sarah actually because I, I value sarah's opinion Oh dear. <laughs> um, I, I think that I think that there probably is um, a female equivalent, um, uh, but I agree. The stereotype is typically about men, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Uh, There's like a hesitation in your voice. You're like, is this a real thing? Is it not? I don't know. Where are we going with this? So it's hesitant. So thank you very much. Well okay. done. I'll tell you how I how I looked into this. So I started with um, with the mental health side, and part of it you talk about suicides. So in 2020, I know it's two years out of date, but this is the Office of National Statistics. That's how many suicides were registered. Now, one of the things that hit me, 75 percent were men <clears throat> and when when i thought about this i thought oh women are more likely to do this actually it turns out women are more likely to attempt and fail and not complete but actually men do it and complete so i was like oh that's that's fucking the trend of what i actually thought but now i understand where these numbers come from so that's why three times more likely but also one of the other factors that came in was men 45 to 49 were the demographic where they were the highest group. I said, like, what's going on then? Why, why is that? So just started to explore these things. What's happening in a man or, or in a man's life at the age of 45 to 49? And it just intrigued me. So I started, and at this time, I think I was about 46. So, so I was like, whoa, I'm in this. Is this going to hit me? Is this, is this a problem I'm going to have? So I started to explore a few things. And one of the facts there, every 60 minutes, and it's a, it's a real sad fact. But what I found out was, I found out that the women in this similar age have this thing called menopause, or, or during this time it's called perimenopause, is the time frame that they've got, and then menopause is when the period stop. Now, ladies, females, I actually have a lot of empathy for you, because... Where do you get any of your information out um, about this? Who teaches you this? Who shows you what the signs and symptoms are? <clears throat> Only last week, I was listening to a radio show, and there was a lady on there who was 35, and she went to her doctors, and she said, I'm feeling really emotional at the moment, sometimes I'm depressed, sometimes I just start crying, and I have no idea what, what's going on with my life. And because she was 35, the doctor went, here, have some antidepressants, and gave her straight antidepressants. Ten years later, she realised through her, through her own education that she was actually going through early menopause. So the doctors were very quick to, to sort of say, oh, let's get, let's get your mood back up and give you some medication. But also digging into it, I found something called the male menopause. I've, I've phrased it manopause. Its correct term is actually andropause. Now, if you go on the NHS website, it will say male menopause, andropause, but I like, think, I like to think that I've invented something new, call it 
the menopause. And that's just for us guys. The reason I'm, I'm sort of talking about this and for the ladies as well, because most of you have gentlemen in your life. So it's, it's good for you to be educated in this, to understand possibly some of the struggles that, that men in your life are having, but, or maybe your parents or your partner. So what is it and how does it come about then? Well, we as men, we have testosterone in our body, but we also have estrogen. And women are the complete opposite. They have a lot of estrogen and a little bit of testosterone. And what happens with a guy, as you can see in the graph there, by the time he's 20, he is raging with testosterone. You think about these young men, they're all out there, they're all, they're, they're, they're all out there all wanting to have sex a lot of the time. They're usually, um, they can be quite muscular. They sleep a lot, but they're very active. And if you think back to, I don't know, when you were in your 20s, guys, you could probably go to work all day, smoke 20 fags, drink 20 pints, have about two hours, get up the next day and do the same thing again. Well, fast forward, what allowed you to do that, sorry, what uh, was the testosterone in your body? Well, test, uh, fast forward up to about the age of 50, and that testosterone level has actually dropped to 50%. So now what happens is when you're reaching these ages of 45 to 49, what I was finding was that men were going through this stage where you've, you've met your, your partner, you've had a lot of sex, you've had children, the children have grown up, they've left, and you've found yourself that you've been doing your career, you've actually paid your mortgage off maybe, and you're going, whoa, 45 to 49, what's going on in my life? Oh, no kids to pay for. They've gone off to university or something. I've got more money because I've been promoted. Do you know what? I'm going to get a six pack, buy myself a motorbike. I'm going to climb to the foot of Everest. And you think, I'm going to do these things that you always wanted to do when you're in your 20s. But life caught you up and you started to have children. You started to go through, through the family thing. But because you've only got 50% of the testosterone and testosterone is responsible for your activity that you can do for you being able to be strong and muscular to have bone density you now can't do it but there's also other factors that by having this testosterone lower your estrogen is actually staying the same level so these new factors are coming in at this age where you want to get your your second wind of your life and have this middle life crisis so as you can see there, it carries on decreasing as we go along. This is why you can still, even in old age, have children because you're still producing sperm, but your testosterone or and testosterone is responsible for the libido, the ability to have sex is lower. So testosterone is the ability to have sex, but the sperm is still being produced. So what are the common symptoms then of this andropause or menopause? Well, <laughs> when we think about it, and I'm not going to say Jamie's name in any way, <laughs> mood swings, depression, irritability. <laughs> Do we know anybody that's quite like that? And this is why <laughs> if we think younger people don't tend to have this, or when we think teenagers, mood swings. Well, actually, what's going on in teenagers? They're having this surge, aren't they? And they have a couple. They have one when they're around 10, and then another one at 13 to 15. And that's their hormones having the surge. And that's the mood swing thing. But as we get older... Um, and you'll all agree with me probably, that women are more emotional than men. I think that's a fact. And that is because they have more estrogen. Well, as your testosterone level is lowering, that means that your estrogen level that you still have is actually staying the same. But the ratios are now equaling out. So you're now having these emotions coming out. So you're, you're a little bit down that you can't do the things you wanted to do. Um, and you're now becoming a little bit irritable. Earlier on... One of the guys said, oh, yeah, you, you forgot about it. And they go, oh, it's memory loss. And how, how many people, when they start getting into the 40s or 50s, we now throw this joke out and go, oh, it must be your Alzheimer's. Do you know when you've forgotten something? We do it all the time. But actually, that's the start of it, because testosterone also helps you to remember things and to, to have a good memory. Also, when you look at um, bodybuilders, let's say, for, for an extreme example, you don't see many... 40, 50 year old bodybuilders, do you? It's because the natural testosterone is becoming lower. So they can't sustain that muscle mass of, of, of muscle that they have because testosterone is responsible for that muscle mass. And that's why women struggle to have this massive muscle mass is because they don't have the testosterone. 
as you um, lower your testosterone down again and this estrogen starts to come in, weight gain starts to happen. So we talk middle-aged spread. It's actually estrogen that's responsible for that as well because testosterone fights off that, that fat. Gynecomastria is what we call moobs or man boobs because what's happening here, we're having this estrogen and estrogen is responsible for breast tissue. So men now having lower testosterone, it can't fight off this gynecomastria. Insomnia, which is trouble sleeping, loss of bone density, lack of concentration. These three here, poor sexual performance, erectile dysfunction and lowered libido, that is all testosterone driven. Now imagine if you're in your 40s to 50s and one of the things that you enjoy is sex and now you can't do that or it's not not as um, not as easy as it used to be. Now think about the blue pill that everyone goes on about the Viagra. Watch the adverts. They're all aimed at grey-haired men. They're not aimed at young kids. And that's, again, something to do with blood flow going to certain areas of the body. Now, it may be that you can still have sex or start to have sex, and then it, it sort of wanes off a little bit. And I think someone said to me, it's like playing snooker with a piece of rope. <laughs> and it then disappears. How, how embarrassing would that be for you, to your partner, to have one this one thing that, <laughs> look at his face, that you both have together? It it's, can be, how, imagine that mental um, stress that's going to put on you, that you can't be the man that you used to be with that. Because the testosterone gives us that energy, fatigue now wanes, which means when you do want to go to the gym, you can't feel uh, as strong, and also night sweat starts to come in. These are all things that are caused by that lowering of the testosterone. One of the, one of the issues with this is it goes on steadily over time, so these things catch you. It's not a, oh, I'm, I'm happy, it's happening right now. It goes on slowly, 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 and before you know it, you find yourself in this deep, dark hole. As you can see there, there are commonalities between these two things. So I think it's very important for men also to educate themselves probably as, as to what the menopause is for ladies. So you can have a little bit of sympathy and empathy, but also ladies for you to be able to understand it within the men. Um, and as you can see there, very, very similar things. Now, how can we help ourselves and reasons that you may actually, as an older guy, be sabotaging your own testosterone levels? The first one is alcohol. Um, as we get a little bit in the more in the middle age, what we do is we tend to find we're doing well, we tend to drink more, or we, we need more alcohol to get the same effect. So we, we are struggling with something maybe, or we just, you know, the term I've heard before recently was um, work, um, functioning alcoholic, someone who has a drink every single night, when they don't need to, but they, oh, I need this drink, and it feels like relaxism. But actually, alcohol is a poison. And because it's a poison in your body, that's why it has this adverse effect. Feel good, feel bad, make you feel ill if you have too much. Your testosterone is, is, is one of these things that fights off poison. It's something that keeps you fit and well. So by having excessive alcohol, you are naturally reducing your own testosterone. So by reducing your amount of alcohol, it, which is, oh, I was going to ask a group there, but actually it is 14 units a week spread over the week. 14 units, guys, is not a lot when you consider a pint of Stella is something in the region of two to two and a half. Uh, by not sleeping, your body doesn't get a chance to recover. So if you're up all night thinking all night and you're, you've got things on your mind, what happens is your body is like a, a vehicle. You only put your vehicle into the garage and then it repairs. And that's when testosterone does a lot of the repairing. So that's why when you go to the gym, you actually repair while you're asleep. But if you're not sleeping, and um, having low testosterone will, will do this for you as well. That makes your level not being able to be good enough because it's trying to beat back all the problems that you're having. Being overweight, that's the same as alcohol. You're carrying more weight around than you need to. Stress is another one because when you are stressed or have excessive pressure, what goes on there is cortisol is released from your body and the testosterone is what is needed to neutralize it. So if you're stressed all the time, you're actually depleting your own testosterone and it needs time during sleep to build back up again because it's being used constantly. 
smoking, it's a poison. Your body needs to deal with that poison. Certain medications, um, we're talking medicinal medications from the doctor. What they'll do is they restrict blood flows going to certain areas and, and they don't help. Drugs, which is recreational drugs, they don't help either. They increase the, the want, but they uh, decrease the ability most times with these. Steroids are bad, and steroids are bad particularly with young people because, as you saw earlier, they are right up there with their levels. By taking steroids, they push it up right above, outside of the, the normal um, ratio that they should be. And the body, which is producing its own anyway in your 20s, then goes, oh, I've got too much. So your body then starts to reduce its own production because it's got artificial stuff. So when the artificial stuff stops, yours takes time to restart again. And if guys take steroids for too long, their own body just shuts off and goes, well, I'm not needed. I won't produce any more myself. And then that means that's why steroid abuse, as it's called, is really bad in youngsters. Actually, as you get older, we'll, sorry, we'll come on to that in a second. Um, and then extreme weight loss is not good for anybody there. So how they, they are the way we sabotage and they're also ways that we can help ourselves. But how, how can low testosterone be treated? So it's called TRT is the correct term. And there are clinics around the UK that will treat you, but they are private. And I'll explain why. The first one is intramuscular injections, usually within 10, every 10 to 14 days. You want to see a doctor, it gives you some. And that's the artificial stuff that the kids are injecting in the gyms that's bad. When you're in your later on, in your, in your um, what's the term now? I'm going to say more mature years. <laughs> in the more mature years, actually, this is this artificial stuff was developed for this condition. You can have the patches, which are, which are, um, I've got it in there and you put it on and you, your skin absorbs it. The same with gels and there are pellets. I actually had a very interesting conversation with Victoria Wright as well. And we had um, a conversation about the herbal side of it. And there are some herbs and Victoria's got clients, male mature clients that keep going back to her. So I said to her, how do you know it's working? And he went, she said, uh, they keep coming back to me. So <laughs> hopefully not playing snooker with a loose rope. So that's, um, a, a few ways it can happen. Now, a lot of this stuff here you can get and you can buy online for yourself. You don't have to go to the doctors. But the doctors are very, very reluctant to help you with any of this. So here's, here's the, um, the score. For a male, 9 to 35 nanomoles, which sounds like Peter Moles, but it's actually a <laughs> uh, And when we say 9, 9 is on the low, low end. So what, what does nine mean? Well, I'll tell you now. Nine means if I was at nine or below and I said I was a, I was a trans, um, I was trans and I wanted to compete as a female, by having nine or below, I could actually competitively compete at the Olympics for being a female. That's where they, the Olympic Committee put it. So that's how low it would be. And then females, you still have the testosterone, but it's 0.5 to 2.4. Now, when we think about that, and you think about that 2.4 for females, when you're a guy at 35, that 2.4 is massively suppressed. The testosterone overrides it because it's, it's what's that? It's less than 10%. But think when you're down at the nine, that's over a quarter, coming to a third. And that's why then all these emotions and all these feelings are all coming out to you. And that's why then you're having these changes that going through massively between that 40 to 50 age. So these are not, not things that um, are to be messed with, but the doctors set that bar very, very low at nine. Um, and you know what? If everybody in the UK who thought they had this, who actually maybe has this, went to the doctors, you can see what the NHS would, would be overloaded with this sort of stuff here. For women, it's sort of more accepted because women are very open about it. But can you mean, imagine being a guy and, and going, right, I can't perform, I'm not feeling quite right to a stranger or to a doctor um, and to really admit you're less of a man. There is a stigma around this. Hopefully um, we're changing that stigma and we'll move onwards from that. So that's what's going on. All this reading and everything I've just said actually can come from the NH NHS website, but an invaluable source is talking to other guys at the same age and other guys who maybe have been through this and tried things through this, but all that information is, is there. Quite vague. 
and they're not encouraging with it either. And that's really what I wanted to talk about today. That is something that I cover on the mental health course when I'm doing a male dominated um, group because I think male dominated industries like construction who have a lot of guys in this age group, nobody talks about this. I wonder how many of you knew any of that stuff that I just said as males or as females. And that's me. Scan my little QR code, give us a follow. I'm there for any questions if you want. That was brilliant, Harold.